So I've already downloaded and installed a SQL Server 2017 Developer Edition and the SQL Server Management Studio. Uh, and now I'm going to show you how to get some uh, databases and data into your SQL Server Management Studio. So you're going to want to download Northwind, which is a very famous database that's been around for a really long time. Uh, but it's got great data and we'll be able to do a lot of cool queries against it. Um, you're also going to want to download the MURAC uh, database. Uh, this is the one that goes with the book. And you can just left click on these. You're going to want to select the location to download to. Hopefully it'll let you. If it doesn't, it probably is putting them in the download folder, whatever your default for Chrome is. And uh, mine actually opened up in the other window. So you're going to want to download both of these. In addition, we're also going to download uh, some of this worldwide importer data. Now this takes us to a GitHub repository. And what you're going to download is this full backup. And then we'll be pulling in that data as well. So at this point, I've got Northwind, I've got the MURAC downloaded, and I've got uh, the Worldwide Importer full backup. And where I put all of that fun stuff is in a folder that I called uh, Sample Database Management System. So it's basically sample data. And you'll notice that the first two are zipped. So I'm going to go ahead. and extract these. And I'm just going to let them go into the current folder. And I did the test textbook publishers first. Because in order to follow along with the exercises, you are going to need this data. So once it finishes extracting, you're going to have a folder that you're going to want to open. And what we want to access are the databases. And you're probably going to see all sorts of different folders in there. Databases is the one you want. And you'll notice we've got basically three different SQL scripts. So what we're going to do I'm just going to double click on this and it should open up. Yeah, we want it to open up in the SSMS because it's basically a little script that we can run and it will generate the databases that we want. So this little script is actually going to create an AP database. And by the end of this semester, you will actually understand what all of these commands do. <laughs> so for right now, what I'm going to have you do is just execute this script. Okay, and it should come back with a little summary uh, report indicating what it did. And basically it created some tables and it's telling me how many rows it put in the tables. So if I expand databases over here, or if I right click and refresh, I should see the AP database that it just created. And then if I expand that and I click on the plus next to tables, you can see the actual tables that it created. Okay, so that's one of the databases that the textbook author is using. So I'm going to come back over here. And let's see, is that where I need to go? I'm going to do the next one. So I did the AP. Now I'm going to do examples. I'm just going to double click. Okay, so it's brought me into SSMS and I'm going to execute. And again, what it's doing is it's creating a database and it's creating tables. 
and I don't see it yet. So if I right click on databases and choose refresh, okay, then I can see my examples database. And if I click next to the tables, I can see it added a whole bunch of tables. And we're going to go back out and we'll do the last one, product orders. Well, got to double click, quick, double click quicker. Okay, so for product order, we're going to go ahead and execute again. Okay, not as large a database. In order to see it, I have to right click and refresh. And now I have product orders. And if I click next to tables, you can see it created four. So these are the databases and the tables that the textbook author wanted us to have. Now there are some additional ones that I want you guys to have. Uh, just because we need to do a lot of querying and run a lot of commands for you to actually learn the Transact SQL language. And one of the best sources is the Northwinds database. And that is what is in SQL Server 2000. So we do have to extract that. And I'm going to go ahead and open this. And so we've got, uh, looks like an install of Northwinds and another install here. Probably a good idea to read the README. Yep, so we're going to get end up with two sample database files here, Northwind and Pubs, which is kind of what we could tell from the name. So even though this is, was uh, designed for an earlier version of SQL Server, we should be able to install on our current version. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on Northwind here. And I'm going to run it. It looks like I got a couple errors. Let me see if I got any data. Yep, I did. Yep, so it says it couldn't find a couple of stored procedures and we're not going to worry about that. So we're going to go out and we're going to go ahead and install the other one. And again, it couldn't find a stored procedure, but that's really not important. A stored procedure, it's just, it's kind of like a macro, uh, and it's not going to affect the data that we're trying to access. So let's right click and refresh. And here's pubs, which is what we just added. And then we've got the tables there. So just installing the textbook author and Northwind is going to give you a ton of data to practice with. Uh, we're also going to be adding another data source. And this data source is actually a backup file. Now because it's a backup file, what we have to do, there is no script to execute. So I'm going to close these. These are the ones we already ran. We are going to restore the backup and it should work on mine the same way it works on yours. So I'm going to restore a database and I got to find it on my device. And let's see, I put it into a temp folder. 
on my C drive. So it would be easier to find. Oops, Let me click on OK. So when it comes back, it should be boldface with a check. And all you should have to do is click OK. And you can see up here it is restoring the database. And database administrators will take frequent backups of data because then if they have a disaster, they can restore their database and they hopefully won't lose uh, a lot of their data. They tend to take frequent backups. Uh, disasters don't happen. And it says it restored it successfully. So, the data that I see in here would ha it would be from the point of the backup. So anything that I did after a backup would not be included. But you can see we have plenty of tables uh, to work with in here as well. So if you run the scripts from Murak, you'll get the three databases. AP examples, I think it's products. And then if you run the two from Northwind, you'll get the Northwind in the pubs. And then if you download that full backup for world, worldwide importers and you restore that, like I just did, you will have that database and all of those tables. And that will give us plenty of data to work with this semester.